Joining me today, the great Chase Damore. Chase, we had some controversy going into this because when I was contacted to do this interview, you were listed as a reality TV hunk and also a pro boxer. I know you are exclusively a pro boxer. You are the that greatest is, pro boxer. That is obscene, egregious. That's the worst thing I've ever heard <laughs> in my life. What do you mean? I'm the greatest ever. It should be Chase the boxer, not they a never they would never say, hey, do you want to talk to Tyson Fury, the guy from the reality show on ITV? Do you want to talk to Anthony Joshua, the LucasAid ambassador? They'd say the pro boxer, the champion. You are you are one of the, the, the most beloved boxers on Misfits. It's, 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 un, it's unreal. It's unbelievable. As, as the face of heavyweight boxing, as the face of Misfits boxing, like the, the disrespect is unbelievable. And uh, we're here to set the record straight. Now, I know we're, we're having a bit of fun there, but there is a lot of disrespect around your name. People are not complimentary towards your boxing skills but you have been at at uh at um jackrabbit boxing you've been training with a lot of really really good guys people who we've who the the, the obviously there are influencer boxers out there but you know probably primarily training with people who the influencer scene have not heard of talk to me about how this last few months of training has been for you man it's, it's been un unreal like i i can't even express to you the the amount of time dedication effort that i've been putting in and you know like obviously uh, before, you know, I, I fight Corey Wharton, you know, it's not really, you know, you don't really learn anything from that because neither one of us really knew how to box at the time. Um, it was two minute rounds. It's not the same really. And, you know, we fought in 12 ounce gloves and then, you know, you, you give me like, you know, 12 days notice to fight, you know, Bruckner who has this extensive, you know, ring history and, and this and that, and, you know, 12 days, no sparring, you go into that. And then you, you have like a wake up call essentially like, okay, maybe this isn't as easy as I thought it was. Maybe, you know, my pro football background, my athletic background is not enough to just, you know, show up and, and go beat people up. And I think that, you know, that loss was something that I needed. Um, it was something that, you know, really brought me down to earth because, you know, who knows, you know, I beat Bruckner and then, you know, I stopped training. I don't work as hard. And I think that, you know, that loss, it, ga it gave me something to work towards. It gave me something to focus on. And I think, you know, Jack Rabbit is the perfect place to do it because, you know, there are a lot of pro boxers in there and everybody in that gym's a winner. You know, I, I can't even remember the last time somebody lost in that gym. And, um, you know, there's a lot of influencers that train there as well. You know, obviously Anthony Taylor's in there, uh, Dean the Great's in there, B. Dave is in there. Um, you know, like a lot of us, you know, we train at the Le'Veon Bell and, you know, just being in there, being around, you know, those guys, being around, you know, actual fighters, having a, a respect for the sport in a sense and learning how to, to to really do this thing is something that, you know, I'm very grateful for. And the last three months is something, you know, I've really been on top of. You know, it's funny you mentioned, Anthony, as you were giving me that answer, I was looking down because I got a phone call from him right there. He's, uh, you know, yeah, he's he's certainly an interesting character to to have around a gym, right? Yeah, I think, you know, the biggest things I take away from him is like, you know, he is a jokester, but the dude has got a hell of a work ethic. The guy's in there, um, you know, His energy maybe is not unbelievable. As yeah, you know what I mean? Win or lose, the guy shows up the same. And I think, you know, that's something that all of us, uh, you know, I feel like in there, everybody takes something from somebody. And I think the biggest thing I take from him is like, you know, better promo for these fights. Obviously, you know, misfits right now, like nobody wants to promote their fight. I have no idea why nobody's doing this. Um and, you know, he, you know, he's not even fighting and the guy's promoting. And so, you know, I just, you just take his energy, you take, you know, take, you know, his fighting experience, his, his tips and, you know, you kind of just run with it. No, absolutely. So what was it that, that made you make the decision to move to Jackrabbit? Because I know you'd kind of been around trainers in the lead up to your other two fights, but this is a, a, a big permanent move for you. Yeah. You know, the biggest thing was like, you know, I, it was like I loved all my other coaches. They were all really great dudes. You know, obviously I trained trained with Coach Staff. Um, you know, my guys that I had in my corner last time. You know, Vincent James. Uh, you know, I was training at Dog Pound. But the problem that I have with all of these with these guys is, uh, you know, Coach Staff doesn't really have a boxing gym. No disrespect to him, but you know, he's just got like the pad work. You don't really get better that way. Um, he's a great dude though. Uh, the, uh, the other people, it's just like, they were more my friends and coaches. So it's like, you know, in, in combat sports, you can't be surrounded by a bunch of, you know, your friends, you gotta be surrounded by people that are going to critique you, um, people that are going to get on you about, you know, the little things that, you know, they're going to be almost annoying. You feel like you're getting picked on and that's how it should feel. You know, I feel like, um, you know, with the last fight, the, uh, the decision to throw in the towel came from like a friend decision more than a coach decision because my friend didn't want to see me, um, get hurt. And I think that, you know, that was kind of like a wake-up call, too, because, you know, Coach Ivan and the rest of the, the Jackrabbit crew, 
Uh, it was more of, of guys in there that are like, okay, this is a sport. It's a team sport, but it's also an individual sport. And, you know, boxing's not for the for the weak-minded. It's not for the delicate. And, you know, it's going to suck in there. You're going to get hit. You know, it's, it's you know, who said it? But I think, you know, I came up with this quote a while ago, you know, like, Rocky, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get hit. So, uh, well, you you know, I think that was like... You mentioned Coach Ivan. I wonder, though, like, I, I can't imagine this is a conversation you necessarily have had directly. But do you feel he would have thrown in the towel at that point if he were in that position? The fight was going the way it was going. Would he have, would, do you think he would have made that decision or do you think he would have let you carry on? A thousand percent. No, I think Coach Ivan understands that he's, he's big on like understanding that you have more than what you think you have. And I think that, you know, in boxing, what a lot of people don't realize is when you get tired and get fatigued, fatigue makes coward out of anybody. And I think that when you get to that point, yes, I got hit in the head. Yes, I was lightheaded. You know, that's part of the sport. And I think that, you know, Coach Ivan, he'd have been like, you know, you just go out there, dance around a little bit, maybe, you know, lose this round, but try to come back in the last round. Um, just seeing how I did in that third round before, you know, we just decided not to go back out there is, would have been would have been huge. And I think Coach Ivan, I've watched firsthand, uh, you know, sparring with guys who are trying to get out of the ring, um, you know, inspiring him, yell at them and be like, you know, don't come back here if you get out of that ring. You know what I mean? Like he's he's big on finishing. He's big on, um, you know, not not quitting until, you know, until it's it's a safety concern, it's a health concern. And, you know, for me personally, that's huge for me because, like, I'm the type of guy that I'll go out on my shields. You know what I mean? Like, I I played sports my whole life and, you know, quitting was never in my in my dictionary. You know, I was like, you know, if I'm going to get knocked out, let me get knocked out. I'll learn my lesson in that way and not, you know, okay, like, we are worried that you're going to get knocked out, so we're going to throw in the towel, you know what I mean? No, of course, but, you know, like, I think the thing is that you're a great heel, both on, on Perfect Match. You you know what the term heel, right, from pro wrestling? Oh, of course, it's my role. Yeah. I'm the villain. You're, you've been an amazing heel on TV on Perfect Match. You're, you're the one of the great heels in, in Misfits Boxing on social media, all this stuff. But you understand that, like, the fans love you, really, and the people in the sport really love you. And I think that the the main thing is, you know, people clown you about like that one particular clip that's out there. But you know that generally it like the reason it was stopped was from a place of love, right? That that it was not necessarily it it, it looked not very good. You I, I know that in the corner it looked on the broadcast like you were saying you'd seen two of them. And the 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 decision to to stop it was made because people really have a lot of of love and respect for you. Yeah. And and you know, that's that's a very, very good way of uh, putting it, you know, and, you know, Josh and his team, they came to my locker room afterwards to check on me. You know, I have no bad will towards Josh. Man, Taylor, who I'm very close with to this day, you know, he, you know, was checking on me. He was really concerned. Everybody in the Misfits scene, you know, they, they all say like, you know, this is bigger than boxing. Yes, it's boxing, but dog, you're not fighting for the WC belt. You know, <laughs> you're, you're out here this is influencer boxing. You know, you're putting on a show for fans. And I think that, you know, somebody has to be the heel. So somebody has to be, you know, you have to provide entertainment to the sport. And I think that, you know, yes, there's that clip out there of me missing the swing. It is what it is. But the thing about that clip is that people don't want to talk about it. That, that was the most viewed clip in, in boxing. You know, everybody in the world saw that. You know, that's, that's to go with, with pro boxing and misfits. You know, everybody in the world saw that clip. And, you know, I was in Australia and I have people talking about it. And I think that um, regardless of how the fights go, if you are able to show up to, you know, Misfits Boxing in particular and make a name for yourself because everybody wants to fight on these cards um, to the point where it doesn't matter if you're the main card, the co-main or an undercard, like everybody's going to watch your fight. And, you know, like that's the best part about it is like I'm an undercard on this on this particular card. But, you know, everybody in the world's going to be watching, I mean, whether that's for me to it up again or, or to see if i've gotten better or to you know maybe to meme me or clip me or whatever it is but the thing about it is it's like not that many people can sell fights anymore not that many people can can bring entertainment you know like you can you know i don't even i don't think i can name you know three other fights on the card you know what i mean so uh you know it's a big deal i'm excited for it and you know like i said misfits the place of love throwing in the towel like i i get it and i understand it and you know we're we're past that I got a new coach. I got a new corner. And, you know, like I said, you know, it's been three months of grueling training. I'm just now leaving training now and, um, you know, get back to it, you know, again later. So I'm ready. I'm excited. When people like, cause you're very popular from reality TV. You also, you know, you had an audience of people that, that watched you as a college football player as well. There's, you know, people have, you've been around this space a while, but the people who just watched per perfect match, will they even recognize you when you step into the ring? Cause you look so different now. You're like, you're you're completely like you were in good shape then, but you're really shredded now. You're you look like a completely different guy. 
Yeah, you know, it's the thing about it is like, you know, my first show too at the handle, biggest show in the world. Uh, you know, like I was a kid. I was like, you know, like 22, 23 when I did that. Uh, you know, like I still got like the baby fat, you know, short hair, you know, I was still in school. Like I worked at I worked at Starbucks. So I was, I was giving out, you know, iced chai latte bull. You know what I mean? Like uh, you know, and then you know, we get to, you know, film perfect match. Uh, and, you know, that was, you know, a little bit of time later. So, you know, you start to grow and you start to develop a little bit. And then, you know, we filmed that so long ago, you know, you, you fast forward to now. So, you know, the guess my hair is longer. Uh, you know, I got, you know, my nose fixed. It was broken for a bit. So, you know, I got a little, you know, nose job. Uh, you know, I lost You're a ton of weight. You're one of the best got... boxers in the world. You've never even boxed then. Yeah, you know what I mean? I still, you know what I mean? Like, and I still have never been dropped. You know, I don't get hit in these boxes. I'm too quick, man. I'm the greatest ever, like I said. You know what I mean? And, you know, people who are my fans from Two Out to Handle, people who are my fans from football, people who are my fans from social media, um, from boxing, whatever it is, you know, I think that's why I've been able to build such, like, a diverse fan group. And, like, that's why I have, you know, so many followers, whether it's Instagram, you know, you know, over, you know, one and a half million followers on there you know tiktok go almost you know three million on there you know i think that all of my fans all of my audiences they all come from different perspectives and i think that the best thing about misfits the best thing about boxing is like it's a way to essentially combine all my fans whether it's the athletic fans who love sports whether it's the social media fans that like to see me fight other influencers or whether it's uh you know my reality tv fans that like to see that heel persona you know i think that's the best part about it You really did play a great heel on that show. I mean, there's that clip that goes around of you telling these people kind of how you felt. How much of that was legit? Because I know that in this boxing thing, I don't want to give away the business too much, but <laughs> you're, maybe people on Twitter might not like to hear that you're actually a very nice guy outside of uh, <laughs> outside of Twitter. But how much of that stuff on the show was was legit in your real thoughts? Uh, you know, all of it was was pretty real. You know, I think that's the thing about it is with those guys on the TV, you know, some some people who have not done TV before. So what, what I explain to everybody is it's like a it's an imaginary world that becomes your real world. It's essentially like they put us in like this bubble and everything obviously is very like padded and think, think about it like if you're a little kid and you go to like, you know, Disneyland or something, you know, it's 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 real to them. And I think that, you know, in that moment when I was speaking, I was speaking from. Um, I have what it's called like a third eye when I do these shows and I, and I think about it like if I'm an audience member, what do I want somebody to say? And, you know, like I, I tell myself I'm, I'm the voice of the voiceless and I say to them, you know, like, guys, I know you think that whatever you have is real, but I'm sitting here telling you like you're, you're full <laughs> like I had lunch with you and your boyfriend last week. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Georgia, like I sat on this TV show and, you know, we were a couple and I asked every question in the book about you just in case I got quizzed on it later. And everything that you described as not your type is literally Dom. So I don't know what the hell you're talking about. And, you know, no offense to Dom, but like Dom, like two days ago, you told one girl you loved her. Yesterday you were crying over her. The next day you're saying like you've never been happier with this person. Now this is your girlfriend. You know, you know what I mean? Like I'm just going to call it as I see it. And, you know, I'm I'm the type of guy where it's like if I say something, I'm going to stand by it. You know, and like that's that's kind of where like that persona came from. And then obviously, I don't know if you've seen the entire show, but I went in there from start to finish. And I, I said to myself, as soon as I got there, I'm burning the boats. <laughs> that's exactly what I did. I burned <laughs> boats from the moment I walked into that house to the moment they sent me out. You were not there to find love. You were there to, in fact, maybe do the opposite. I was I was there to show people that like you're not finding it here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it it is it's it's such a, a fascinating thing because you talked there a little bit. I didn't know about this because people assume with these college athletes that like, yeah, you're not getting paid for the sport, but you know, the college may be kicking you back a little something or whatever. But you were saying you were working in Starbucks. It is a tough life living that that amateur athlete existence that you were doing for for so long. Can you kind of shed some light on this? I think perhaps this is a part of your story that isn't so well known. Yeah, you know, like obviously like when I went into uh uh to at the handle, like, you know, I was in my senior year of college. So like mind you, like while I was filming the show, I was having to go and, you know, take my finals online essentially. <laughs> and uh, you know, it was the end of my college football career. I was I was training to go to the pros. Um So in between, you know, before I got signed to my first professional football team and, and filming two out the handle, like, you know, we got paid a bit on the show to like basically last me over while, while I was filming. Once I got back, I had to go right back to work. And, you know, it's it's the weirdest thing. You know, you just film like this TV show and you know you're going to be 
like you know this mega star you know when it comes out and you're kind of you can't say anything about it you're under an nda so basically i'm just you know serving people their chai lattes uh in the morning and you know in the afternoons i'm making you know uh content for tiktok and social media and then at nights i'm training you know it's a nine ten o'clock at night just to you know go to bed and do it all again the next day and i think that you know that was like a consistent routine for me. It was something that, you know, I kind of like fell in love with the process similar to like how I've done with boxing. And I think that, you know, you don't make a lot of money and you you just kind of just hoping that this is going to work out. You hope the TV show is going to be success. You hope that your videos that you're spending all day making are going to, you know, pop off. You hope somebody sees it and somebody wants to pay you to, you know, rep this brand and this brand, but you don't really know. All you can do is kind of just pretend it's going to happen and then just keep working towards that. Is is this boxing thing now? Because I remember the first couple of times we spoke, it was like, oh, well, you know, I'll do this fight with Josh and then or JMX at the time. I remember that was something that was on the table at once. I still, maybe still is. I still want him. Yeah. And, you know, but it was like, OK, maybe I'll do one or two of these and then I'll go to the XFL or I'll go make another run at football or whatever. Is boxing now the full time interest for you? You know, like for right now, I would say yes, for now. Um, as of right now, like my complete focus is boxing. Obviously, uh, you know, I've been in touch with a lot of pro football teams, XFL and USFL. So, like, you know, there could be any moment at any point of any day that I could get a phone call and say, like, hey, Chase, you got to show up to, to football. You have to show up to training camp. And, you know, it's going to kind of pull away from fight camp. You know, I got to go back and play football, essentially, and then go fight this fight. But you know that, that at that point if that does happen then then there will be a decision made but like as of right now it's not something that like i'm currently really pursuing i'm not out on the field like you know running routes or anything i'm i'm just in the gym you know two three times a day training hitting the bags hitting people i'm sparring you know lady on bell sparring minicon you know just just essentially just my full focus is boxing right now because like i said like you know this i fell in love with the sport it's something that i didn't think that i was gonna enjoy very much just because like you know i wasn't big on you know combat sports until you know you start doing them and like i said you know that loss really woke something out woke something in me and brought something out of me that i didn't know i had and that was you know that desire to win that that competitive nature that i haven't felt since i was like a kid in football so it's definitely something i love and it's definitely my main focus as of right now is that what's different this time is it that that you like last time you were going into it like you say you hadn't felt that desire to win obviously the first one you couldn't have won even if you knocked the dude out, right? They still would have said it was a yeah. draw. And then this other right. one, uh, you know, you took it on short notice. Now, having been around Jackrabbit, having been around, you know, trained killers, around winners in 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 the sport of boxing, and getting that that spark for it, is that what's going to make this performance very different on April twenty first? Um, that will be a part of it. I think there is going to be multiple parts of that. I think the biggest thing too is like people. Um, are watching to watch me fail. Like people want to see me pick this up. People want to see me laugh. They're like, bro, like you haven't been like, you're not him essentially like give up boxing. And I think, you know, that's part of it too. You know, it's like, I've always had this chip on my shoulder to prove people wrong. And I think that, that you know, me just training so hard because I understand like the pressure and like what essentially is on the line here. And it's like, you know, I'm somebody that thrives in the pressure. People are like, Oh, don't put that pressure on yourself. It's, it's something that I live by. And I think like, the biggest thing that I would say is different in this case is like before I was like, bro, I'm about to collect the paycheck. I'm gonna go beat up this little dude. I'm gonna be like, you know, boxing's a joke. This this shit's easy. And then I'm gonna bounce up out of there and I'll see you guys on Twitter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and, you know, yeah, I'm gonna go enjoy the holidays, you know? And, and uh, you know, like I said, you know, at that, at that first fight or the second fight with Josh, you know, I showed up to, to the open workout. I left the open workout when he was warming up to go eat Chipotle <laughs> next door, came in there with like, I think I had like a couple shots in my cup of day. Can you hold this like to the interview? Yeah. I did maybe five minutes of the open workout and then I, I dipped out of there. You know, it was just it was something like, you know, I didn't take serious at all. And, you know, like, obviously like things are a lot different now. It's like, I'm still having fun with it, but it's like, I feel like the biggest difference is, is like now I have something to prove, whereas before I had nothing to prove. I look, I've taken up so much of your time. I really don't want to take up a great deal more, but it, it has just struck me in my head, we're about 20 minutes into this thing, which is a, a very uh, great of you to, to give us. I ha There's two words I haven't said yet. It's Stevie Knight. He's kind of an important part of this whole story. And we he hasn't even really been mentioned. Are, are you happy with how he has been pushing this thing? I know you went head to head with him, uh, with Chris Ridgway re recently. But is, are you happy with Stevie in general? Or are you kind of, you feel like he's maybe not giving this the, 
the same work that you're giving him. Uh, he lost his damn mind. Um, so that man has lost <laughs> his damn mind. Oh, my God. He said, bro, was training on an Oculus. Like, I was like, that is, like, bro, is training in virtual reality. Like, that is, like, uh, I've done some crazy shit in my day. Don't get me wrong, but that is egregious. Like, this man is training him with a video game to get ready for a fight. I've never seen that before. I don't think he's taken it as serious as um, as anybody I fought, really. Not even Corey, not, not Josh. This guy literally has never boxed before. You know, like, I will give it to him. I think that his promo has definitely been... Um, up there, you know, him and Corey are probably tied right now. I think it's funny that, you know, his girl is very involved in this promo, too. Uh, you know, I think they're having fun with it. You know, like, the, the thing about it is, is, like, Stevie, like, I think he just watched the one clip, and that's all he's going to talk about, guaranteed. You know, we go to the press conference, that's all he's going to talk about. He's like, oh, you missed this swing. Like, what the hell is this? You know, that's all he's going to have. And the entire press conference, I'm going to be sitting there just like, bro, like, you act like the whole world didn't know that you were going to say that. You know, come up with something original. You know what I mean? And... I think that he watched that as like the entire fight and he's like, oh, bro, this is going to be a breeze. And and that's not the case at all. And I think that, you know, when he gets in there, he realizes like, bro, this ain't a street fight. That's something I had to learn first. And um, I think it's something that, you know, Stevie Knight is going to go night night for good. So yeah, you're gonna <laughs> I'm going to virtual reality. Um, uh, yeah, I'm saying <laughs> back, to, back to the Oculus. <laughs> no, it, it, it's certainly a, a very exciting fight. I think the people are very excited. You've done a great job. I've never seen anybody because the kind of obviously coming off the first one, you know, it is what it is. You know, they call it a draw, whatever. The second one, I've never seen. Let's call the second one your debut. Let's say because the pro debut, all of that. With all due respect, I've never seen anyone come off of a pro debut like that and be more beloved afterwards, have more fan, have more people talking about you in that way. When, when the result and the public opinion at the time went, went so against you. You know, it, uh, I'm. Re I think a lot of people. Uh, do you think a lot of people are going to be surprised at how different the Chase Demore they see on April 21st is to the guy they saw back in November? I think that I think that all the statements will just be just be solidified. I'm the greatest ever. They're going to be like, holy, <laughs> he wasn't blowing smoke up. This dude, this dude could fight Deontay and Tyson on the same night. This dude is incredible. He's the modern day Muhammad Ali. He's 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 Leonard Lewis. Like he's he's him. You know what I mean? I think that I think they're gonna watch this. They're gonna be like, bro went from 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 playing from chess boxing to to <laughs> dudes ready to go fight for a WBC belt. You know, like what the hell happened? And I'm gonna be like, look, I went down the rabbit hole and I came back a different man. Absolutely. Well, look, it it, it certainly there's going to be a lot of interest. And and you know, I know that you're being tongue in cheek and you're you're gonna you're playing with people when you talk about. Deontay, Tyson, all these people. I know you'll eventually get in with them and beat them easily. But, you know, yeah. it is, I think that a lot of people have said that once you get the basics down and, you know, you've got you've got the proper training and the proper time to train, with all the physical advantages you have over, like, most boxing heavyweights, but like, you know, in, in pros or whatever, it, it will actually, people will be surprised at how good you eventually get. And, I, and, you know, that's the craziest thing is, like, anytime I've trained with, like, these pros, like, you know, uh, Gerald Washington, Deontay Wilder, even Ryan Garcia, you know, like, they see me in person and they're just like, you, if I was to go into a video game and build a fighter, it's everything that I have. You know, you're six five or two meters. You have, an like, an 84-inch wingspan that's, like, more than John Jones. Your hands are the size of freaking watermelons. Like, you yeah. can, you're, you're 200 and you know, 40 pounds of solid muscle. And, you know, like, I just, I just think that. And humble as well I, on top of all of it. Yeah. Very humble guy too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so I, I think that, I think that, you know, you look at all these, these athletic attributes that people like train for months and months and months to get. And, you know, like I, I was given it. And, you know, when I, when I work with these guys and they feel like my jab or my twos, they're just like, bro, like you time this up. There's not a, there's not a chin out there that's going to be able to take this and i think that you know like i hear this all the time but in my head i'm just like i had a miss swing i had a miss swing i had a miss swing i, I can't miss no more and so it's like my sparring footage is just like i just i pick my shots i shoot them i get it back to my guard i fight like this fight is going to be very fundamental i think that's the biggest thing before i get with the fancy footwork and the dancing and all that like, this is going to be such a fundamental fight just so people can see like okay chase has got the fundamentals down we should be worried absolutely april 21st Chase Demore versus Stevie Knight in 
uh, in New Orleans, Louisiana. It's going to be a massive event. Tickets are on sale now. It'll be on DAZN. No pay-per-view. If you've got the DAZN subscription, it's free. It's it's just there for you. I can't wait to uh, to watch this one, Chase. And I can't wait for our next interview to be after your first professional win, one and one. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be very exciting, and, and uh, I really appreciate your time today. Appreciate you so much. Thanks for having me.